Pepsi-Cola. P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the magic murder, a thrilling counter-spy report to the American people, brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now, another report to the American people. In your family's interest, listen to these findings, recently released by the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. After thorough and impartial tests, Pepsi-Cola proved of highest purity. Pepsi-Cola has more quick food energy and value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, tested, compared against all other leading nationally known cola drinks, Pepsi-Cola won out. You get the best, and twice as much, in delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now to Counter Spy. Oh, this would be Mr. Peters, would it not? Good evening, Professor Cabarrus. Good evening. I appreciate you seeing me this evening. Uh, please, come in. Thank you. Uh, this chair by the desk, Mr. Peters. Thanks. Well, you were lucky to find such a nice little house so near Washington, Professor. <laughs> it was your chief of the counter spies, Mr. David Harding, who helped me find it, Mr. Peters. The three rooms are sufficient for my personal needs. I have turned the cellar into a fine laboratory for my homework. <laughs> of course, you'll be working most of the time at the government laboratories, won't you, sir? Yes. The development of turbojet engines for land vehicles is a big project. Mm -hmm. I'm honored to have been brought to this country by your great government to work on it. By the possibilities of jet engines for land use are... <laughs> but you did not come for a lecture on engines, Mr. Peters. <laughs> not quite, Professor. The main purpose of my visit is to have you fill out this questionnaire. Ah, that is what you mentioned on the telephone. Yes. Now, by law, the counter-spies are responsible for the safety of distinguished visitors from abroad. The more information we have, the easier our job is. But no one means me any harm, Mr. Peter. We hope not. But in these days, there's no knowing. Oh. Now, will you fill in these blanks? Uh, now then, uh... Do we have the full name correctly, Professor? Uh, of the University of Maslava. First name, Jan. Uh, middle name, Fyodorovich. Yes, and last name, Kabaras. C-A-B-A-R-R-U-S. Uh, correct. It's an odd name, sir. Uh, but common in my part of Europe. Oh. Now, our records already show that you hold five degrees. Yes. And before the last war, you were a scientific consultant to the government of your own country. <sighs> Those were happy, fruitful days, Mr. Peters. But today, my country is in the hands of... My feelings on that point are very strong, Mr. Peters. Uh, please, go on. Now, as to your experiences during the war and immediately after, our records require some more information. Well, I shall do my best. In 1939, when the Germans first... Oh. Operator. Operator, give me counter spy headquarters at once. Somewhat shaky, Mr. Harding. I am much more disturbed over Mr. Peters. It's me, too. He's very seriously wounded in the head. Oh. He's been taken to the counter spy infirmary. 
The shots seemed to come, you said, from that glass door to the sunroom. Yes. It must have been opened quietly by someone as Mr. Peters and I were filling out this... Oh. By the way, here it is. Or oh, the questionnaire. Thank you. Oh, Professor, did you by any chance get a glimpse of the man who fired the shots? Just as it were, out of the corner of my eye. Well, can you recall anything at all? Try to recreate the image of that moment in your mind, if you can. Let me see. I was here. And Mr. Peters was there. You were at right angles to the sunroom door. Yes. And then the door must have opened. Ah, he wore a black velour hat. Oh? And, uh, he must have been holding the pistol in his left hand. Left-handed. Now, go ahead. I believe he was tall, wearing a dark coat and... And, yes, a mustache. Uh -huh. Black or dark brown. And uh, one other thing. Yeah? In my mind, the picture of that man is like death. Death? He seems like a skeleton. Sunken eyes. A thin, thin face. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Harding. This may be all a waste of time. Your pardon, Mr. Harding. Oh, yes, Edward. Did you and the boys find anything? Uh, yes, sir. The attacker apparently entered the sunroom from outside the house. Cut out a square of glass above the lock on the door from outside into the sunroom. Let's see. Professor Cabarrus, with your permission, my men will keep working here. We can't even tell now whether the shots were meant for you or for Mr. Peters. Edwards, bring all the data with you later. Yes, sir. I'm going to headquarters to see how Peters is. Peters is still on the operating table, Mr. Harding. The man who fired the shots was very accurate. All three hit Peters. One raked a furrow along the top of his head. I expect Edwards will find that bullet buried in a wall at the house there. And the second bullet lodged at the side of his neck. We've removed that one. There'll be no serious after effects. What about the third bullet? Lodged in his skull. We're studying the x-rays now. Doctor, Harry Peters is not only my assistant, but he's my friend as well, and I, I hope... Oh, we're, we're doing our very best, Mr. Harding. I... Would you excuse me? Harding. Edwards, Mr. Harding. I've returned with all we found at the professor's house. I'm in the identification section now. Thank you, Edwards. I'll be right down. We couldn't find any trace of footprints around the house, Mr. Harding. The grass is all pretty well grown. Well, what about car tracks? Oh, no, sir. Well, then, let's add up what we know about the attacker. Now, that, that bullet you dug out of the wall... It's a thirty-eight caliber, sir. Uh, from an automatic. All right. Man using a thirty-eight caliber automatic. He fired at a distance of about 20 feet... In imperfect light, and that suggests he's a good marksman for a gunman. If he was aiming at Peter. And we know he gained entrance to the house at the back through the uh, sunroom by cutting out a square of glass above the door lock. Yeah. I guess then he reached inside and let himself in. This complicates the problem, Edward. It's a burglar's technique. It's not often you find a professional gunman who uses burglar techniques. Or vice versa. All right, Edwards, let's get to work. Now, if you'll be good enough to handle the loudspeaker system to the floor below there. First fact, gunman, 38 automatic. Gunman, 38 automatic. Next. Left-handed. Left-handed. Next. Technique of entry. By rear of establishment. Technique of entry by rear of establishment. Next. By door. By cutting out glass. By door. By cutting out glass. Next. Appearance. Mustache. Black. Or dark brown. Appearance, mustache, black, or dark brown. Next. Eyes, 
black or dark brown. Eyes, black or dark brown. They got something, Edward. Yes, sir. And it's coming up here to the booth on the teletype. Here you are, sir. Well. Outside wire, please. This is very strange, Edwards. Yes, hello. Professor Cabarrus, this is David Harding. Uh, yes, Mr. Harding. We've located the name of a man answering the description you gave us. And so quickly. It's amazing. The name is Bones Cleburne. We could have him in our hands inside of two hours. I'm so relieved, Mr. Harding. There's only one difficulty. He was in an automobile accident in Florida. He's been dead for eight months. Dead? Well, then, I'm afraid my recollection of the attacker's appearance was not accurate enough. Uh, how's Mr. Peters? Well, I'm very hopeful that when Mr. Peters regains consciousness, he'll be able to give us a vital clue in this case. But how is he, Mr. Harding? The doctors are waiting for the shock to subside before operating. He will live? I'm told his chances are only 50-50. We just don't dare operate, Mr. Harding. We just don't dare. I don't understand, Dr. Delano. Well... The bullet lodged in the frontal lobe. Probably the frontal gyrus. Just missing the lateral cerebral artery. Oh. Now, the removal would be a most delicate operation. None of us here on the staff knows the technique well enough. Well, who does? Only one man, I'm afraid. A great brain surgeon who just this past year de developed a new technique for this type of brain operation. Get him over here, Dr. Dillon. Well, he's Dr. K.T. Holborn of Central Hospital, Colby City. City. That's a thousand miles away. Well, let's yeah. get on the phone, Dr. Peters has got to be saved. Operator, this is Mr. Harding. Yes, Mr. Harding. I'm going to be here on Dr. Dillon's line in the infirmary for some time, and I want you to keep it clear for fast work. Certainly, Mr. Harding. I want to place a call to Colby City, Central Hospital, Dr. K.T. Holburn. That's H-O-L-B-U-R-N. Colby City, Central Hospital, Dr. K.T. Holburn. Right, and rush it. Operator, this is Counter Spy Headquarters. I want Colby City 6700. Colby City 6700. Dr. K.T. Holburn. Dr. K.T. Holburn. What is your number, please? Equator 1000. Will you hold the line, please? No, Harding speaking. Mr. Harding, Dr. Holburn is not at the hospital. Oh? Let me speak with the long distance operator, please. Surely. Hello? Hello, sir. Dr. K.T. Holborn is not at the hospital. Well, does the hospital know where he can be reached? Now, this is vitally important. I am sorry, sir. They say Dr. Holborn's not in Colby City at all. Where is he, then? He's on a medical research trip to South America. South America? Well, do you know where he is right now? According to the schedule he left with the hospital, he's in Caracas, Venezuela tonight. A tour for a stopover. Venezuela? Well, how's he traveling? By plane, sir. Commercial Airlines of South America, the Rio de Janeiro flight. Well, thank you very much, operator. Holborn's in Venezuela, Mr. Harding. Well, that's a bad blow to Peter's chances. I'm not giving up yet, Dr. Dillon. Yes, Mr. Harding? I find that Dr. Holborn might be reached in Caracas, Venezuela, at the Commercial Airlines airport, Rio de Janeiro flight. I've got to do everything possible to reach him. Will you put a call through there, please? Hello, Miami. This is Washington, long distance. Will you give me your overseas operator? Overseas. Hello, overseas. The ticket, Washington, Equator, 1000. Mr. David Harding, counter-spy headquarters, calling Dr. K.T. Holburn at Commercial Airlines Airport, Caracas, Venezuela. Washington, Equator, 1000. Mr. David Harding, counter-spy headquarters, Calling Dr. K.T. Holborn, 
Commercial Airlines Airport, Caracas, Venezuela. Will you ring the number, Washington? Countess by headquarters. This is the overseas operator. Let me speak to Mr. Harding, please. Harding speaking. On your call to Caracas, Venezuela, due to the number of calls already on hand, the next available time is tomorrow afternoon. Will that be satisfactory? Tomorrow afternoon, operator Dr. Holborn's a brain surgeon. We must reach him for an important operation. We'll try to complete your call as soon as possible. Caracas. Miami overseas operator, a ticket. A ticket. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Mr. David Harding. Mr. David Harding. Calling Commercial Airlines Airport. Commercial Airlines Airport. Rio de Janeiro flight passengers. Rio de Janeiro flight passengers. Dr. K. for Kenneth, a T for Thomas Holburn. Dr. K. T. Holburn. The call is wanted as soon as possible, Caracas. It's in connection with the surgical operation. We will hurry. The serial number is 14 9 Seven nine. Serial fourteen nine seven nine. Commercial Airlines Airport. This is the overseas operator in Caracas. Mr. David Harding in Washington, D.C. is calling a passenger on your Rio de Janeiro flight, Dr. K. T. Holborn. In Rio de Janeiro flight, it has not yet come in. What time is it due? It was delayed over the Caribbean by bad weather. It is due in two hours. We can give Dr. Holborn a message when the flight arrives. Please do so. Have him call the overseas operator. It is in connection with an important surgical operation. Two hours, Mr. Harding. And there's nothing we can do for Peters. There's got to be. Yes, Mr. Harding. Connect me with the airport in Caracas, will you please? Put the call through no matter what. In a moment, back to Counter Spy, presented by delicious Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Yes, twice as much and better, too. You know Pepsi gives you twice as much. You know Pepsi's better, tastes better. But now I want to make sure you know which cola drink is of proven highest quality. Listen. Impartial tests were made comparing all the leading nationally known colas. And here's the news. Delicious Pepsi was rated tops for quick food energy and honest-to-goodness value ounce for ounce. Yes, more value and quick food energy in every tasty sip of Pepsi. That's why Pepsi's so refreshing. Why you feel so good, why you're on the beat, why people call Pepsi their favorite treat. When the qualities prove tops and the taste is so delightful, so refreshing that you bubble and the quantity is double, say, is it any wonder Pepsi's America's big, big favorite? Insist on tasty Pepsi wherever you may be. At the fountain, say, Pepsi, please. At the stand, say, Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big bottles. How about getting a carton tonight of delicious Pepsi-Cola? Delicious Pepsi-Cola, delicious Pepsi-Cola, delicious Pepsi-Cola, delicious Pepsi-Cola. Now back to Counter Spy. Caracas Airport to Flight 598. Caracas Airport to Flight 598. Flight 598? What is it, Caracas? Do you have a Dr. K.T. Holborn aboard? Dr. Holborn? Uh, yes. Yes, we have. There is an emergency telephone call for him from Washington, D.C. You are due in one hour and 45 minutes, but at the request of the Chief of the United States Counter Spies, we have obtained special permission for you to come in ahead of time, if you can do it. We can try. You give us the airline and landing clearance. We will arrange everything. Come in with all possible speed. I can be over the field at 23.30. Bring me in fast. Doctor. How's Peters? Resting comfortably, but every minute counts. Pilot, 
Right. Uh, where will I find a telephone? Now, that's side entrance to the administration building, Dr. Holborn. Thank you. Overseas operator, Caracas. And this is Dr. Holborn. I understand you have a call for me? Yes, sir. One moment, please. Overseas Miami, your call to Caracas, Venezuela. Washington, your call to Caracas. Equator, 1000, your call to Venezuela. We are ready. Harding. Dr. Holborn in Venezuela for you, Mr. Harding. Go ahead, please. Dr. Dillon. Talk to him. Yes. Hello, hello. Holborn speaking. Oh, Dr. Holborn, this is Dr. Henry Dillon, Chief Medical Officer of the United States Counter Oh, yes, Dr. Dillon. We have a serious case here that requires your technique, the Holborn incision. And none of us here is familiar with it. I suppose I fly right back to Washington. Well, I'm afraid there isn't time for that now, Dr. Holborn. Uh, could, could we do this? If I acquaint you with the X-rays, could you then direct me in the operation over the phone? We'll have the phone connected right in the operating theater. Ready, Dr. Holborn? Ready, Dr. Dillon. Anterior, posterior, and lateral X-rays show the bullet to be midway between the third ventricle and the cella turcica, with the head of the bullet approximately two millimeters from the anterior aspect of the lateral ventricle. Well, then, make your incision starting at a point 35 millimeters from the zygomatic tubercle and 12 millimeters from the Tarian suture line. Parallel to the superior temporal line and distal to the sphenoidal sinus. And distal to the sphenoidal sinus. Sphenoidal sinus. A lateral x-ray shows the nose of the slug to be two millimeters from the anterior aspect of the lateral ventricle. Uh, two millimeters. We then uh, bring your incision up at a 45 degree angle towards the superior temporal line. Angle of incision. 45 degrees toward the superior temporal line. 45 degrees toward superior temporal line. Right. That next step, Holborn. Make the incision no more than three centimeters in length. Incision three centimeters. Right. Scalpel? Scalpel. All right, Holborn. I'm making the first incision. Hello, Peters. Hello, Dave. Hey, that was pretty close, fella. The doc said you tore up the international phone well, system. Peters, right? now the main thing is you're going to be all right now. Well, I may miss a couple of days, Chief. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, I guess my time's up. You know, Dr. Dillon wasn't even going to let me in at all. Dave, about Professor Cabanas. Mm -hmm. Did you get the questionnaire finished? Finished? Well, that was finished before the man opened the sunroom door and fired. Professor Cabanas gave it to me. Man? Sunroom door? Yeah. Well, the shots came from behind me, Dave. I was sitting at the uh, desk easy, and... Easy, Peter. You better take it easy. Look, I'll come back this afternoon. We'll talk about it. You go to sleep. Well, Edwards, Professor Cabarrus isn't here, but we can work anyway. Yes, Mr. Harding. Now, Peter said that he was sitting here at the desk. Well, I faced him right at the sunroom door. Professor Cabarrus said that that's where the attacker appeared. Now, but Peters was looking right at the door and saw no one. And another thing, the three bullets that hit Peters hit him in the back of the head. That means then that the bullets came from behind him. And there's only the fireplace behind the desk, this one filing cabinet. Of course, when I spoke to Peters, he was still foggy from the operation and the anesthetic. Look out! Thanks for knocking me out of the way, Edward. Where those shots come from? As I was looking at the filing cabinet, the little metal flap covering the lock on the second drawer moved aside. Behind it, I saw the muzzle of a pistol. Now, let's see. Locked. Hand me that poker from the fireplace. All right. Thanks. We'll pry the drawer open. Oh, an automatic. Uh, what's that apparatus, Mr. Harding? That looks like a 
Looks like a photoelectric cell. Yes, projecting a photoelectric beam across the chair at the desk to actuate the firing of the automatic. But uh, why didn't it go off the moment you sat down there? I can't tell offhand. We may find it's a delayed action system taking maybe a minute and... Mr. Harding. Oh, hello, Professor Cabrera. Uh, your man at the front door told me you gentlemen were here. I take it you've discovered, sir. The filing cabinet, Mr. Harding. An ingenious murder scheme to kill Peters while he sat at that desk. To kill Mr. Pe... Then he's dead? Somebody wanted him dead. Dreadful. Dreadful. Who could have used my house to try to murder him? I have only one suspicion, Professor. It was someone who wanted to conceal certain facts about himself. Edwards, that questionnaire, please? Yes, sir. Professor, you told me you and Peters had completed filling this out before the shots were fired, but Peters tells me you'd only reached item seven just before the questions concerning your activities in Europe during the war. I'm sure Mr. Peters is mistaken, Mr. Hart. No, he's not, because this reveals the motive for the murder attempt. Peters might have asked pointed questions, and they would have shown that during the last war you were not in exile or in the underground but in the pay of the very people you pretend to despise. You're ridiculous, Mr. Hart. Not at all. But this morning, I talked to our attaches in your capital, and these answers here are false. You gambled. Nobody would check them. You'd be safe to work on American scientific projects and steal vital information. Edward, search him. Yes, sir. Mr. Harding, I protest. You will have every liberty to in court because I'm charging you now with the attempted murder of Harry Peters. I'm very happy to say you failed all around. Ah, delicious Pepsi Cola. Bring it on now. Enjoy that bubbling, tangy, tasty treat. Sure hits the spot. At parties, it's a wonderful idea to serve delicious Pepsi. That extra quick food energy gives folks that bounce, that zing. And Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottles go twice as far. You get a carton of six bottles, and you serve 12 full-size drinks. So save that money, get the best, and get twice as much in delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Pepsi-Cola is a drink for you. That's it, delicious Pepsi-Cola. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting case of the bootleg buttons. High-grade gold purified in the white heat of flame. A criminal scheme forged in the heat of greed. Yet your counter spies were able to apply the heat of the law to a trio who dealt in death and double cross. Listen on Thursday to The Case of the Bootleg Button on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York and was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Paul Milton, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight.